And then those two great pilots, Rick Zigby, flying peace. Guys, we have our great opening day. I'm so glad you're here. You guys be a part of it. Rob Rogers standing. connecting the two jumpers and displaying the flag for a great photo opportunity. When he is ready, our right to present our national anthem. I'll ask my staff, that's the building attention if you will. Mind the hats, please. As we can visit our national anthem. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in. flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Rob Ryder. It's showtime now with the Patriot team safely on the ground with two aircraft. That are exiting off to your left. That is Rick Siegfried in the big airplane. That's the only oh, lot of smoke flying the lower day. All of them are A historic yard. Yeah, it went from a junkyard yeah. to a historic yard. <laughs> what other kind of things did he have in that place? All he had, yes, yeah, well, two of the B36 these. He had an F, an F model, one of these. He has, he has a Corsair frame. He had some T28s. He had an A4D Sky Raider. He's had uh, uh, F86s and a B36, B25. There was a Cutlass in there, Frank. Remember uh, I, I can't, I can't name everything. Whatever he, he could get his hands on, he, he got. He got, and he he would drag that stuff home, and 
he take all his kids and load them up and drag them to the airport and they take the airplane apart, yeah. drag it home, put it back together or pile it up. And now it's pretty much gone. Most of the airplanes, they're, but they're, Mr. Saplata did not want to sell anything that he had and he was very picky about letting anybody buy his airplanes and we were fortunate enough that he like contacted you. the Mr. Riley and they allowed him to come buy this airplane and, and he advised them on other airplanes to sell. He's, they, the family has sold Mr. Saplata has thus passed away and he and his wife passed away so they are trying to work with them and try See, to I didn't ever hear the story about it hurt, but the one of the guy that's down in Texas mm -hmm. that was on AOPA. Yeah, of course, yeah, you heard all about oh, him, that grumpy old man. Half. Yeah. He's that's that's still amazing. That's a similar situation. The no, this guy just, wanted something he wouldn't got it. Oh, just to show it, okay. And uh You won't do it. Yeah. It sits higher and all that. You won't do it. That's a Piper dealership. Chuck Doyle in Minnesota had a That's amazing. This thing is, this is much bigger than a, than a, if you put them side by side. Of course, now, when you, with, with, you talk about getting it out here amongst these big airplanes here, they don't, it doesn't look too big, but it's, it's much bigger than a Mustang. So it's got 650 cal engine. One of them? Feed them. I just want one. <laughs> Where did they find one the basket? It was found in, in Mexico City in a can, brand new, never run. That's uh, six fifty cals in the uh, in the wing one. Go to the back of the airplane. I saw them exposed. Yeah, yeah. I walk under the tail.
Okay, gotcha. Oh, I just I was confused. Sorry. Yeah. 
。他干什么？他测试。Some pneumatic thing? Yeah, he's just servicing the, uh, the struts right now. Okay. What do you do on the uh, chopper? Uh, oh, you are? Yeah. So you're a rotor head, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure am. Do you, do you wear that sweet mask then with the eyepiece and the, your eye, wherever your eyes go, the gun goes too? Yeah, it's, uh, it's all driven by the helmet. Yeah, the okay. Part. Yeah, sure is. So how about you? I'm a Warbirds volunteer. Warbirds volunteer. Also, and, uh, I'm on uh, duty in the building. So, gotcha. yeah. Awesome. One second. Yeah. You good? So, just, uh, you film for hobby projects? Yeah, yeah. just YouTube. Oh, yeah, so. cool. Awesome. You cool being in a video? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, nice. Yeah. Have you seen any combat yeah. with this yet? Uh, um, so, yeah, we've, uh, we actually just got back in February. From okay. It, so. Where are you staying now? We're at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Yeah. Fort Campbell. Uh, got back in February, and then uh, obviously just flew up, flew up from Fort Campbell for the air show. So, yeah. so have you always yeah. been a helicopter pilot then? No, I was fixed wing pilot before. Uh, oh, yeah. Flew on the civilian side, oh, okay. and then uh, ended up joining the army when I was about 21, and then went right into the Apache. So from there. It's pretty fun. Still fly, still fly fixed wing on the side for fun, yeah. and then uh, do this for work. Okay. Sure do. <clears throat> yeah, this is probably the coolest aircraft the Army operates. Yeah, it's a it's a great airplane. It really is. So. Actually, sits right now uh, with all like the uh, the dummy missiles and everything. Uh -huh. She weighs just a, just a little bit more than 18.5. Yeah. Um, she can go all the way up to about 20,000 pounds. It's looking better on that on the uh, on the left side.
Blackhawk here for? She's looking for a UH-60. I don't think I've seen one. No, I've seen a Huey, a Little Bird, and then both of these choppers. Okay. Cool. So, awesome. Not yet, anyhow. Alright. Alright, well, I'm I just want to see what one looks like. So. Sure, sure. Have you seen the movie Blackhawk Down? Uh, about $50,000. Oh, yeah? You just gotta, you gotta step back here. Well, you should get a picture next to this one because this is a really cool. I just yeah. sent him a picture of oh, this did? and I asked him if he if this was his. Uh, yeah. But this is as cool as, cool as it gets. So. Thank you. 
Uh, is that a radar dome up there then? Yep, so that's the fire control radar. Okay. Um, okay. You can help or you can. No, I got it. Um, so it sort of works similar to a Doppler, right? You know, your, your Doppler uh, is going to be looking for clouds, right? This yeah. guy is looking for targets on the ground. It also has an air targeting mode as well. Okay. What it's going to do, it's going to send that radar energy out. When it bounces back, whatever it picks up as an energy shape, right? Because it's going to hit trees, it's going to hit brush, but it's going to also hit a vehicle. Yeah. And when it comes back to us, it will go to our weapons processor. And that processor has all those vehicles pre-put pre in there, so it'll be able to tell us on our tactical situation display, like, hey, oh, yeah. bad vehicle, this is the kind of vehicle it is, this is where he's at. So it could detect it could detect the signature just by the shape of it? or Yep, by the shape of the signature. Wow. Just like how Doppler can tell you what kind of clouds are coming based off of what the cloud shape is and all yeah. that. Yeah, and we're, we're talking saying, air, air, stuff in the air, stuff on the ground? Or? It can do both. It, really? it has two modes. It can do air targeting mode and it can do ground targeting mode as well. Wow. We actually were using it on the way in just to see. Yeah. You know, so not every Apache has it. Um, yeah. Typically, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think it was standard. Cause yeah. It seemed so weird. the Longbow was the first one to use the FCR. That's the Delta model Apache. Um, All right. This is an Echo model. Um, typically, you'll have two to three on in a company, and then they'll be able to shoot those targets out to, uh, to, your, to your sister ships. Yeah. So what kind of armament do you carry? You got the rocket pods, you got the missiles, and yep. the gun, right? Uh, so this is the, the show, if you will. It's, it's uh, inboard, you'll have your, your hellfires, outboard, you'll have your rocket pod. Um, yeah. Now if you're, in a, it's just dependent on obviously the, the environment you're in, right? If you're in a, a hot and high environment like Afghanistan, yeah. uh, you're probably not going to be able to carry this configuration just because it's a lot of weight to be carrying around when it's right. 90 degrees out and you're already at 10,000 feet. Okay. Um, but uh, right now we can carry eight Hellfires. We have two 19-shot rocket pods on it. Uh, we have our, our aux tank in the center, which works as a auxiliary fuel cell, and it also carries 300 rounds of 30 millimeter. Okay. Um, so it carries 100 gallons of gas, and it has some munitions for us. We can also do uh, an ammunition pack, which carries 1,200 rounds of 30 millimeter. Okay. Um, but typically, we're always going to opt for the 100 extra gallons of fuel to give us a little more station time for the guys on the ground. Yeah, yeah. What's what's the range on this? Uh, so we can usually get about two hours of station time. Uh, yeah. Range-wise, you're looking at 400, 450, you know, depending on the conditions. Okay. Um, but typically, we're able to get about two hours of station time, just kind of depending on how far the good guys are away from our airfield when we're yeah. in a combat environment. And this, this doesn't have any air-to-air -air refueling uh, capabilities, does it? No, it does not. It okay. does not. I remember uh, last year there was a, yep, the, the a one Chinook or a mil uh, gun, gunship Chinook, I think yep. it was, right? And um, they had the big boom sticking out of it. Yep, so the, the 160th has. 160. We'll have those refueling booms that they'll use, but for us it really isn't much of a need because we're usually going to have a, a refueling area pretty close to us. Yeah. Um, so we can usually get down and, and get fuel and, and reload fairly quick. So they're really... Tactically speaking, it doesn't really benefit us. Yeah. Because um, we're not going to be hauling people. We're there to support the ground guys. So. So it's primarily a ground support, but it does air to air yep. too. Yeah. Um, air to air. Uh, yeah. You know, not really. <laughs> oh, no, they're, they're not heat seeking missiles or. No, no. Uh, the Hellfires. You know, you you, in theory, uh, could use them, yeah. <laughs> but but typically we're they're they're air to ground. Okay. Um, I thought I heard of some air-to-air -air kills with one of these in Desert Storm or something like that. So. It's possible. I, yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you hear all the crazy stories like, oh, I, I had an engagement with a Hellfire from however long or, you yeah, know, and yeah. blew up whatever vehicle, but, um, yeah. So, uh, so Cobra versus uh, Apache, which is better and why? <laughs>
Those are the two coolest helicopters I think the United States makes right now. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you. So the Marines have their new Viper. It's oh, their the AH-1 Zulu. Um, that's their new, their latest and greatest. Um, Bell makes that. Yeah. Boeing makes Watch out behind you. Yep. Um, both are, are very capable aircraft. Uh, both have a very successful history. Yeah. Um, it's just. Yeah, the, the Army wanted something a little newer. They wanted a new design, so yeah. they opted for the Apache, whereas the Marine Corps just kept with their Cobra. And then their latest model of, of Cobra uh, is very, very great aircraft. They have It's two, twin engine now. It's got four blades. Um, very maneuverable, very fast. It can carry the same munitions we can. Yeah. Um, as far as our, uh, our capabilities go with electronics and, and electronic warfare and that kind of stuff, we have a little bit more capability, I think. but. We're both very capable aircraft, and we both get the job done just the same. So, okay. I remember there was yeah. a Comanche that was supposed to replace this, but I got gas, right? Yeah. So it just became a very expensive program. But yeah. I will say a lot of the technology that that came off the the Comanche was able to be implemented into future upgrades of the Black Hawk, of the Chinook, of the Apache. Yeah. Um, what they were able to figure out, uh, and now we have our future vertical lift program, which are they're hopefully going to be getting that uh, moving here a little. Vertical lift. Future vertical lift. Yeah, so the the Army, and probably read more on Google than what I'll be able to tell you, but yeah, uh, yeah so the Army is looking into future vertical lift programs with uh, pusher props or tilt rotors. Okay. Um, kind of like the Ospreys? Similar to the Osprey, yeah. So yeah. Bell uh, Bell has a design where it's a tilt rotor, and then Sikorsky um, has their Raider, which is a pusher prop. So it, uh, it has a rigid rotor system, um, and it also has a pusher prop in the back. So you get a little more airspeed out of it. Um, yeah, but if you if you look that up, man, it's it's pretty cool. Um, I mean, obviously, it's it's a ways out in the future, but uh, that's what we're looking at doing. But we're hoping to get uh, 10 to 20 more years out of this. Really? I mean, it's a great it's a great design aircraft. It's you know the premier attack helicopter. So yeah, but yeah, man. Well, what's the Russian you know? Yeah, so they've got their what is it? I think it's the the 26. Don't quote me on this. I'm not sure. I'd have to. I'd have to oh. <laughs> Uh, their Havoc uh, is what the, the NATO code name is for it, the Havoc. It looks very similar. Yeah. It's got the scissor tail rotor on it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't speak too much about the capabilities. Bond, they were yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Um, but of course, they have their MI-24, too. That's their Hind. That's their famous one. You see it in Rambo and stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. like what they flew in, in the 80s when they were in Afghanistan was their Hind. Yeah, they got the um, twin uh, jets right in front there. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, man, it's, it's fun to fly it, uh, very capable, it's combat proven, and, yeah. But, uh, so you a uh, Warbird guy? You... Yeah, so I volunteer for the Warbirds, I do security for them, and, you know, cool. I like to our shift each day, and when I'm done, I just go out and cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, Moves it's, your uh, thumb? It's kind of cool. So it me, yeah, you know, it's kind of like your plane, I'm using my thumb to control yeah. <laughs> you know, I see, well, I watch the zoom on here, I can, you know, with my arm, I can control the zoom here with my hand, and, yeah. It just smooths everything out, so it makes it. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the big thing that, that sets us apart from the other aircraft is just our ability for, for mum team, man on man teaming, we can, using uh, you know, ISR assets and, and kind of just that combined joint effort is really what separates us from from other aircraft and other comparable roles. Yeah. But, so where where have you been with this so far? I've only been to Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Uh, we, we just got back, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We still had active duty people in Afghanistan, but yeah, we do. We do. We do. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, they're still still fighting to do out there. So yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, um, yeah. Never gonna end. I don't think. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens here. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, we just got back about five months ago. This this bird right here, I think it's got about 500 combat hours on her. So okay. she's seen a little bit of time too. Uh, yeah. All in all, it was. Uh, it was a good experience. I had a lot of fun. I mean, you, you can't really do your mission when you're an attack helicopter in the States, whereas you got a Chinook or a Black Hawk, they can still transport people and, and transport equipment. But for us to really be able to do our job, we have to go down range and go to Afghanistan to, to do what we do, because we're an attack aircraft. But, yeah. Did you ever do any simulated, um, what do you call that, uh, the war games, anything like that? I mean, we train, you know. Yeah. I mean, we're always training. Um, that's, that's kind of like what we do. Yeah. So, uh, especially at Fort Campbell, I mean, we're the premier attack battalion. We always say best damn attack battalion in the Army, the first of the 101st, yeah. spec no awesome. mercy. 
Um, so yeah, we, we shot the first uh, rounds in the first Gulf War. Uh, yep. So they were they were made famous for that, and uh, we try to uphold that today. So we're always out training. We're always um, always doing something. So yeah. we're, we're always we're, we're keeping busy. That's for sure. So what's your favorite movie that uh, involves helicopters? <laughs> <laughs> it might have to be Apocalypse Now, that scene where they're playing right All the right, Valkyries well, and they go If you've ever town. seen the movie Firebirds, uh, Firebirds, oh man, yeah, so uh, Firebirds actually, it, it was like the Army's response to Top Gun. Yeah. Doesn't do a great job of depicting the Apache, unfortunately. Uh, they're uh, actually doing like air-to-air -air combat and stuff, which is uh, not, not something we do. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Black Hawk Down probably. I mean, that's everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for your service, absolutely, man. Yeah. yeah, I hope you have a good show. You're gonna be here all week. I sure will. Yeah, awesome. see you around. Yeah. Well, like, ah, you're you're Fort Campbell, right? Yeah. You're gonna know my brother. What's his name? Chase Miller. Uh, That's your fucking brother. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm not My cooler or my tent if you want to come by later on. <laughs>
think he's upside down. Yeah, he's upside down. I think. He's laying on his back like a turtle almost and scratched yeah, up. Yeah, he's, he's, he's yeah. on his back. And if they, if they lose their wheels, guess who hits first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Oh, yeah. That's a good
So you're saying if one engine goes out, then both rotors will still turn? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, it's uh. Kind of need that, yeah. Otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. it'll work. Yeah, it's a redundant system. Okay. And so you do have armament on these? I didn't know that. Uh, no, we don't usually fly with it in. Uh, you know, obviously in the United States, but uh, we yeah. also have, uh, not, not just armor, we have the uh, bulletproofing as well. Oh yeah? Okay. Because last year I saw the, the gunship version of it. It had the Gatling guns and the big uh, refueling boom lamp too. The golf model. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Okay. Cool. And are you the pilot then? I am. Okay. Very cool. Have you always been a uh, rotor head? No, I was a parachute rigger first. Oh, okay. Out there. Yeah, that's, that's. <laughs> Drip jam. Hello. Hello. This is actually exit. Oh, yeah. I'll go to the back. Sorry. Oh, I knew. This is the exit. Oh. <laughs> What's uh, this portal up here? Which one? This. Oh, it slides. This is. The oh, the door just slides yeah, up like that. I see. Okay. Yeah, the, the bottom yeah. half folds up. The top half slides down. Uh, okay.
Dipstick. <laughs> you work on jet engines or? <laughs> no, you're just looking at the. Yeah. It's like brain surgery, huh? Trying to figure out how human mind came up with this. Yeah, I know, right? It was the Germans, man, back then, before World War II. 80% from Yeah, let's go. 
44 fan blades, 36 in the booster section, and there's multiple in the compressor. They go all the way up to 72. So you got a whole bunch of different size blades to do the whole thing to make it work. Yep. Yeah. But I'm going to close this thing up. Is this what you call a high bypass turbo fan, though? Yes. And you said the majority of the thrust is coming from the fan, yep. not the exhaust? Okay. Cool. That's a lot quieter. Yeah, the, the newer ones are even quieter. Are they? Yeah. There's no one, when you hear like a B-52, man, with all those, you know, those eight turbo jets. Yeah, they're a lot longer. Yeah, it's quieter than one of them, but yeah. the newer jets are a lot quieter. Well, the blades are not, are not hooked to the turbine and the hydraulic between So the, the aft ones are just to divert the air out. That's what I'm saying. The turbine. Yeah, there's a shaft inside. There is a fluid coupling. Yes, it has a fluid coupling. Yeah. So those blades don't actually touch this blades at the fluid. Like an automatic transmission. Yeah. So. Are there blades that spin counterclockwise in there? No. No? Okay, everything turns the same way? Yep. Yeah. When there's a yeah, 200 uh, round there's assault pack they put underneath there, yeah. and then you can also put your M4 in there. Yeah, they did away with it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. 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 I don't have a runaway yeah, gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pull the trigger because it hurts so Right from the yeah. back yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. How often do you have to disassemble it for cleaning? Uh, every time you use it, uh, you got to clean it. 
and uh, repair it afterwards. Yeah. Um, yeah. We do basically an annual oh, annual uh, fire and uh, disassembly maintenance on it. Yeah. Okay. How long does it take to do a full disassembly? <laughs> I mean, it depends on how good you are. Maybe maybe a minute or so. Oh, really? Yeah. In one minute, you can have the whole thing parts. All the parts you need to clean. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it breaks apart pretty easily. Yeah. So this is an M16. Nope, this is a 249. 249, huh? Yep, and then that's a 240. So we don't actually have the M16 anymore, we have M4s. Oh, okay. I thought the Marine Corps used M4s, but the, everyone else used M16s. So nope. Nope. Yeah, we've had M4s for 20 years now. So. And that's just a shorter barrel. Shorter barrel, a uh, little different. Um, with we don't have uh, full auto on ours. It's uh, three round burst. Yeah, semi. Yeah, yeah. semi. Okay. Well, semi and three round burst. There's, there's three different levels: safe, semi, and burst. Gotcha. Okay. And your sidearm is what? This is a nine mil Beretta. Okay. Made in Italy, right? It is. Well, actually, I think they probably have a contract where they made them in the United States, but yeah, okay. Italian manufacturer. So this gun, is this something you would mount on a vehicle then? Or yeah, typically on, on, typically you'll see it mounted, but you can have it uh, dismounted as well. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't want to fire that thing from your hip, I don't think. No, no. What, what does that even weigh? Uh, it's about 30 pounds or so. Yeah. And then you'd have to carry external ammo with that too, right? Absolutely, yeah. You have your, uh, your belts yeah. ammo. And a spare barrel as well. Okay. So, so what exactly do you guys do then? In the uh, security forces. Security? Yep, so we uh, do law enforcement and an air based ground defense. Okay. Yeah. So, are you the type of guys like when, uh, I don't know, like a high political figure lands somewhere and they have guards that. We do, yeah. We yeah. just had POTUS come to Milwaukee last oh, week. Yeah. So, yeah, we did uh, POTUS support and security for that, security for Air Force One. Okay. Very cool. All right, well, thanks for your service, okay. guys. Thank thanks. you. Take yeah. care of the show. When did the bonus, when did they like re So is that an M16? Uh, they come, so uh, no, sir, here. it's an M4. M4, them. okay, shorter barrel. Like right? yeah. added Quite a bit, a couple differences. Yeah? It was January. January, January, yeah. And you got a bunch of mags there, huh? Three. Yeah, lots of rounds. You're going to the battle, man. Yes, <laughs> here, yeah. load it. Yeah. So We're you ready. make sure that the commander authorizes you to do your six. Do you have a sidearm, too? Yeah. Well, that's a Brenna. M9, ours is Colt, yep. So who's, who uses the Glocks? Does the Navy use Glocks? I really couldn't tell you. I'm not really okay. sure. Yeah, then you have to wait. Yeah, then you'll have to wait literally until you're actually yes, yes, you get it. Oh, really? I can't resign? Not early. I mean, you can pay for it on the date.